beautiful Anchorage, Alaska is our host for the 8th Annual Armed Forces Classic. And what a couple of days it has been here. Alaska Airlines Center will be full. Both the people just coming to see the game and also a lot of troops from the nearby base. Joint Base Elmendorf Richardson, a lot of the troops have come over to partake in the fun tonight and watch a couple of college basketball games here in Anchorage. Our first game, a really good one. Washington and Baylor, two teams with very high hopes for this season. One team very young, one much more experienced, but both figure to be very good. Hi, everybody, and welcome to Anchorage. Dan Schulman and Jay Billis, very happy to be here and very happy you are here with us as much as you can be, and it's really been a great couple of days. And what a privilege it is and an honor to be here for the Armed Forces Classic. And we say it every year, the American military is the best team in the world. And I am, as always, in awe of their selfless service and their commitment. And I know the players that are here from both Washington and Baylor feel the same way that it's been a privilege for them to be here as well. Yeah, they've had a great couple of days and they've gotten a chance to do more than just play basketball. They've gotten a chance to explore as well. Where are we? Well, we are here in Anchorage, Alaska. As you can see, not that long of a trip for the Huskies, a little bit longer for the Bears. Joint base Elmendorf Richardson, affectionately known here as Jay Bear, just a few miles northeast. We are here closer to downtown. The base here in Anchorage, nearly 60 mission partners. It is a joint base between the Army and the Air Force, but there is the presence of many other branches of the military as well, and more than 16,000 people, civilians and military, call the base home. For more on some of the activities the last couple of days, here's Coach Greenberg. Thanks, Dan. The Armed Forces Classic is much more than just a basketball game. It's really an opportunity for us to say thank you for the tremendous sacrifices our men and women of the Armed Forces make and also put in perspective for these players, again, what these young people do that are their age to enable us to live the lives we live in. And think about the activities some of these, have exper these guys have experienced. All right, the teams had a chance to visit the base. They had a chance to check out the air hangar, which was unbelievable. But more importantly, they were invited onto the U.S. Air Force transport plane and even into the cockpit. Please don't take off. Hey, they had a chance to go through the simulation of the paratroopers jumping out of airplanes. You're going to see some jumping today. It's going to be a little bit different. They had a chance to see the F-22s take off in a unique vantage point. And more importantly, they had a chance to have some great pictures taken and a lifetime of memories. This is a once in a lifetime experience. It is that, Coach. Thank you very much. We'll be hearing from Seth Greenberg all night long. Civilians and military mixing and enjoying. We've got lots of stories to tell, and we've got some great basketball coming up as well. Everything goes according to plan. These F-22 Raptors won't ever take off in anger. This whole experience will just be a story the crews tell their grandchildren. You know, perch right here and let me tell you about the time I lived in the absolute middle of nowhere. The men and women stationed here, just miles from Russia, are in a constant and stressful state of alert. They train and train and train and then find ways to pass the endless days. Ready to man their battle stations, waiting on an alarm to sound and a target to be intercepted. If everything goes according to plan, this boredom is their biggest enemy. But if it doesn't, if the unthinkable happens, these planes will rise into the clouds will be supersonic. Sometimes freedom is complicated, and sometimes it is simple. It's a human being sitting in a cockpit, not sure what awaits just over the horizon. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Alaska Airlines, proud to support America's heroes, and Dollar General, save time, save money, 
every day. And we welcome you back to Alaska Anchorage inside the Alaska Airlines Center. We are moments away from the tip-off here between Baylor and Washington. Time now for our national anthem. Ladies and gentlemen, tonight's colors are being presented by Joint Base Elmendorf Richardson's Joint Service Color Guard. Please join us and stand for the singing of our national anthem presented this evening by Sergeant Asia Hunter of the 9th Army Band. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glare the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there oh say does that star-spangled banner yet wave or the land of the free and the home of the brave. You can see Scott Drew, the head coach of the Baylor Bears. Mike Hopkins, the head coach of the Washington Huskies as we get Closer and closer to game time, and you can see uh, the coaching staffs for both teams kind of decked out in some military garb as well, this being the Armed Forces Classic. Dan Schulman, Jay Billis, back with you here in Anchorage, and let's start with Washington. A couple of top ten incoming freshmen really highlight this team. Both McDonald's All-Americans, you're talking about two of the best players in the country, Isaiah Stewart and Jaden McDaniels. Both those guys can really play. They are outstanding freshmen that are going to be high picks in the NBA draft if they decide to come out. Stewart, more of an inside player, but can play outside as well. And McDaniels, about as versatile a 6'9 as you are going to find. He's from the Seattle area, and he is a big-time talent. Both these players can play in the zone. They can play man. They can switch out onto smaller players, give a lot of versatility to this Washington team. The defending uh, Pac-12 champions, and again, a lot of new faces, a lot of young players, so we'll see how all that talent translates this year for the Huskies. As for Baylor, you know, year in, year out, Scott Drew has himself a very competitive team in the Big 12. Well, in their first game against Central Arkansas, they hit 18 threes in the game. It's a team that can shoot from the perimeter, attack the basket, and they do an excellent job of offensive rebounding. It's a team that's expected to do very well uh, in the Big 12 this year, as they always have under Scott Drew. But I think you're going to see a team that has to get second shots, and they have got to beat that Washington zone down the floor and knock down some perimeter shots to win. And a great early season test for both of these programs. They both got some very good non-conference games coming up. But if you want to learn something about the team you've got, tonight's a very good way to do it. Well, these are two, these two teams are going to be in it all season long in each of their leagues. You mentioned that Washington won the Pac-12 last year. They're a better team this year. Not as experienced, but they are actually more talented, and they have a tremendous amount of length. So if Mike Hopkins decides to go with that 2-3 zone, they can play man. But I think we're going to see him play a ton of zone this year. And with that kind of length, that is Syracuse-type length along the back line, and Jaden McDaniels can play out front. Those are some long-armed guys. They've got like seven, eight guys that are six, six, eight or better, and they've got five of them that's, that have wingspans of over seven feet. And, of course, Mike Hopkins spending 22 years as an assistant at Syracuse and bringing a lot of the Syracuse stuff to Washington. As for Baylor, like 
Washington won their first round game in the NCAA tournament as a nine seed and then lost their second round game, a nine losing to a one. They lost to Gonzaga. And they've got uh, an interesting team, a couple of transfers who figure to be a big part of their program this year. Yeah, Macy Oteague, who's an outstanding player, had a great first game, 18 points, 10 rebounds against Central Arkansas. And then Davion Mitchell, who transferred in from Auburn, he's running the point, a really good player. The first of two, we've got another game coming up later on tonight, about midnight Eastern time on ESPNU. The host school, the University of Alaska Anchorage, taking on the Coast Guard. That game about two and a half hours from now. Not quite sure why you didn't rappel down with the honorary game ball tonight. Well, I wouldn't have needed the rope. I could have just jumped down. <laughs> His joint base, Elmendorf Richardson, and 673rd Air Force Wing Commander, Air Force Colonel Patricia Chang, and Command Chief Master, Sergeant Lee Mills. Jerry, we got a couple minutes still. And the officials and members of the military, including Colonel Patricia Shank, exchanging pleasantries. And the ceremony's coming to an end. We're getting ready for some basketball here in Alaska tonight between the Huskies and the Bears. Baylor 1 0. You mentioned they beat Central Arkansas in their first game. They actually played that game at 11 o'clock local time Tuesday to give them a few extra hours to get up here to Alaska. Washington, of course, didn't have nearly as far to come. Coming from Seattle, but everybody's adjusted to the time, and we're expecting a very competitive, energetic basketball game here tonight. And a game that's going to be decided on the glass. Both these teams can rebound. But Baylor has traditionally been an outstanding offensive rebounding team. And they're going to have to generate some second shots, knock down some threes, which is difficult to do against Mike Hopkins' zone. And they're going to have to get a lot of second shots. Our officials tonight, Marcus Pettigrew, Nate Harris, and Jerry Pollard. We are ready to go with the Baylor in white, Washington in purple. Welcome to the eighth annual Armed Forces Classic. And we are excited for this one. First possession of the game going to the Huskies. And if that looks like Quad A Green, that is Quad A Green, the former Kentucky Wildcat who just had his appeal granted last week. So he gets a full year of playing time instead of only being eligible to begin his time with the Huskies at the semester break. Baylor, Baylor goes man to man. They doubled Isaiah Stewart as soon as he put the ball on the floor. He's going to have to do a better job of handling it as Washington turns it over on their first possession, largely because of the double team. And here comes Macy Oteague, the transfer from UNC Asheville, number 31. He can really, really shoot it. And Washington, no surprise, Jay, they start in a 2-3 zone. That's what they do. And Mike Hopkins, they can play man and did play man sometimes last year. But I think with their length, they are going to go zone all the time in this one. Teague, who is a terrific shooter, a low release, but a great shooter, gets the shot off and he knocks it down. Well, you're right about that low release point. He loads it up and shoots it from underneath his chin. But if you give him a little bit of time, he can really knock it down. He was an excellent scorer at UNC Asheville, where he transferred in from. Averaged over 16 points a game. He was two times all Big South and just had too long to load that up. And I, I think that was an issue for Nas Carter not getting out there in time from the baseline. Again, Green at the point for Washington. Little turnaround fadeaway and a soft touch to get Washington on the board. Uh, Quade Green played at Kentucky, as you mentioned, and was one of the best shooters on that Kentucky team. Just not quite as athletic as some of the guys he was going up against. But per 40 minutes, he averaged over 15 points, shot 45% from three. Boy, Tristan Clark didn't realize there was nobody near him. Finally turned around, faced the bucket, but he couldn't knock it down. There won't be anybody near him because that's what Washington wants to give up. They don't mind if Tristan Clark takes that shot near the free throw line. That's just a two, and it is not an easy shot. This is what Washington does not want to allow, those threes. A deep three there from Jared Butler, who's coming off a 30-point effort Tuesday against Central Arkansas. 
Isaiah Stewart, his first field goal attempt will be a three, and he misses it wide left. Hesitated on that one. Carter should have taken that ball in transition all the way to the rim. Nobody from Baylor stopped him. He stopped himself. Look at the length on one side up at the top of that zone with McDaniels at 6'9". Yeah, McDaniels has like a 7'5 wingspan. If he gets his hands up, he can really discourage that shot as he just did, forcing that turnover from Davion Mitchell. And a chance to run for the Huskies. And Hamir Wright called for the travel. He got caught in between. Do I want to shoot or do I want to drive? A little bit sloppy to start the game out. Both teams trying to push the ball up the court, try to get something quick. Well, Hamir Wright is a good-looking player. I've really enjoyed watching him practice, watch a lot of film on him. He can pick and pop. He can stretch you. Just needs to improve his rebounding a little bit, but he's a good-looking prospect. There's another look, and Clark again. They're not going to guard him. Yep. They are not going to guard him there. Basically, Mike Hopkins and his staff are saying, if you can make that shot, more power to you. It's just a two. How many of those are you going to make? What they really want to do is keep them to uh, five or below threes. If I watched the tape of, of Baylor playing Syracuse last year in the NCAA tournament. They knocked down a ton of threes. Syracuse did not do a good job of getting out to shooters. Right from the wing, and he buries the three. Really good ball movement. Quade Green with a... Nice paint touch and kicking it out to Hamir Wright. We were just talking about his ability to shoot it. And he proved us right by knocking that down. Right from Albany, New York. There's a strong New York State presence on this Washington team. And again, a lot of that, of course, goes back to Mike Hopkins' roots all his years at Syracuse. And Green got caught in the air and picks up a foul. Really good job by... Washington of moving the ball from one side to the other a little almost handoff and Freddie Gillespie just came off of his man and wasn't able to get back out there on the penetration But Quaddy Green looks so much better this year than he did last year. He's always been in good shape, but he looks in great shape right now Nice interior passing Clark can't finish though on the feed from Freddie Gillespie now Washington took off early there and left Nas Carter all by himself. Everybody in purple has got to stay in rebound. They did not do it there trying to get out early, and Mike Hopkins is probably going to let them know about it. they got to stay in rebound. Well, one of the issues for Washington, they have not been, and granted there's a lot of new personnel, they haven't been a great defensive rebounding team, and Baylor has been an extraordinary offensive rebounding team in recent years, so that's something to keep an eye on tonight. Well, especially Mark Vidal, who is one of the best offensive rebounders in the country. Leading rebounder last year. He's coming off the bench. But when he gets in there, he's going to go to after the offensive board. Yeah, he's going to knock some people down like bowling pins tonight. Going after that board as well. He's a strong young man. Good fake. And then Wright lost it on the way up and a chance for Baylor to run. Really five on three. Wide open look. Teague, and he knocks down his second three of the night. Not enough players back. When Hamir Wright drove in, he took down Isaiah Stewart. It looked like bowling pins going down, and it left a five-on-three for Baylor. They took advantage. Stewart with good position. Jump hook, follows it up, but it misses again. Well, he didn't get the tip, but how quick off the floor was Isaiah Stewart going after that? What a good-looking player he is. So strong. He's a man-child. Stewart committed first, and then he basically recruited to McDaniels. McDaniels is the local product from Federal Way, Washington, and Stewart kept on him to commit to Washington, which McDaniels did a few months later. So you got a guy from Rochester recruiting a guy from Seattle, right. essentially. Right. Makes sense. To go to Washington. <laughs> Happens all the time. <laughs> Another wide open look for a three. This time it's Jared Butler, and Mike Hopkins can't be happy. Well, you got to find shooters in transition, especially. And Jared Butler... Averaged 10 points a game last year. Had 30 in the game against Central Arkansas. He hit eight threes. Stewart called for the offensive foul. And Baylor already with three threes in this game to take an early four-point lead. Wide open, Amacio Teague knocking down his three of the contest already. And then Jared Butler with a one of his own. Coming in transition. Got to find him.
is a flying gas station. This is a helicopter on empty. And so the dance begins. The airplane goes as slow as it can go without falling out of the sky. The helicopter goes as fast as it can go. It's dangerous and almost comically nerve wracking, but they make it look easy. They make it look like a stroll down a sandy sunset beach. It is amazing how difficult some of the tasks are that are being performed by the fighter pilots who are on J Bear, the base here in Anchorage, a joint base between the Army and the Air Force. We get a chance to spend some time with some of the fighter pilots last night. And they're talking about like some really heavy duty stuff and they are it's just like Top Gun. I mean, that's how cool these guys are. Yeah, it's it was it was incredible yeah. being with those guys from the 90th fighter squadron. Uh, what studs. I mean, just incredible. A 9-5 lead for Baylor here in the early going. Dan Schulman, Jay Billis, Seth Greenberg, the eighth annual Armed Forces Classic. And we're coming to you from beautiful Anchorage, Alaska, Washington in purple, Baylor in white. And into the game, a guy you were talking about a little while ago, Mark Vital, 6'5", 230, number 11 for Baylor. And he's going to do some different things in the middle of that zone, or at least try to, than Clark did. Offensive rebound. Oh, and a chip he won't go down. Washington very fortunate they didn't give up, give up a bucket there on the second shot opportunity. And really, it's been about Washington turning the ball over, going a little too fast on its offensive end and putting them in a position where they've given up some transition threes. Their initial first shot defense in the half court setting has been pretty good. Jaden McDaniels with a three, the assist to Quade Green. A little roll replace action, and Jaden McDaniels is a big time talent. He is the, the new age player, the hybrid that can play inside or out, but especially he's so gifted on the perimeter. He can handle it, he can shoot it from deep, and his arms go forever. I mean, look at him. <laughs> yep. His older brother, Jalen, a couple of years at San Diego State and now playing in the G League. Another offensive rebound by McDaniels with a rejection at the rim. No longer out at the top. He's down along the baseline. Ooh, and Vital at the other end. One good block deserves another. <laughs> Both of these teams athletic. Both can get up and down the floor in a hurry. Vital again in the middle of the zone. Vital's only 6'5". You see, they're treating him exactly the same way as they did Tristan Clark. They are not going to guard him in the middle. And you always hear people say, go against a 2-3 zone. You'll hear coaches say, put the ball in the middle of the zone. Well, Washington is inviting that. What a block by Mark Vidal. But Vidal's going to have a lot of opportunities there. And when he gets the ball, you'll note the, the defense isn't going to collapse on him they'll fan out to three-point shooters and say, hey, if you can make that shot, go ahead and make it. But he's got to take it, right? If they're going to leave him wide open, doesn't he have to kind of force them into changing their, their outlook on it? They're not going to change it. Yeah. They're going to say, are you going to make 30 of those? Right. And finally, a turnover. Good ball pressure there by the Bears. What can beat Washington in that zone are threes and offensive rebounds that are kicked out for threes. And so they, their entire defense is structured around taking away the three-point line. Mike Hopkins, who uses a lot of baseball analogies when he talks about a basketball, says they will play man-to-man -man from time to time because they like an off-speed pitch, something just to change the way that the Bears are looking at them. But they're staying in the 2-3 zone right now. Bay up at the top along with Green. And another three for Mitchell. So Baylor's got four buckets, and they're all three-pointers. Well, using a baseball analogy, that was a fat pitch down the middle. <laughs> Nobody got a hand up. And Davion Mitchell just stepped easily into that shot. And Mitchell's not a big player. you got to get a hand up to discourage that. Baylor sticking with man-to-man. -man. Baylor played about 50% zone. I think maybe a little more than 50% zone last year. An inadvertent trip there by McDaniels, but he gets whistled for the foul, his first. Sunday afternoon at 1 o'clock Eastern time on ESPN and the ESPN app. How about this for a good early season game? It'll be the Sunshine State rivalry game between Florida State and sixth-ranked Florida. The Gators, I know, a team you are very high on going into the season. I think Florida's got a chance to be a, a, a truly outstanding basketball team. They've got a freshman phenom from the McDonald's All-America game. Scotty Lewis that's coming in. They've got really good guards. Noah Locke who can really shoot it. Andrew Nemhard, a sophomore point guard. 
And then they've got Kerry Blackshear Jr. transferred in from Virginia Tech, who could very well be SEC Player of the Year. But Florida State's had their way with Florida the last few years. And a travel called on Devontae Bandu to take us to the under-12 media timeout. A six-point lead for Baylor in the early going as we go back to the studio and check in with John Brickley. Brick. Ninety-four feet with Colonel Patricia Shank. You are the base commander of a, a joint base here with two branches of the military. What's it like having Army and Air Force on the same property? It's great. Um, we learned here very quickly to speak two different languages. We're bilingual, um, and it's pretty cool. Just bilingual. What, what does that mean? Bilingual. Well, so you learn to speak Army and you learn to speak Air Force, depending <laughs> on the audience that you're talking to. So depending on who you ask, I'm either the base commander or the garrison commander. But we try to respect both service cultures. Well, you've had a long and distinguished career in the military. You've been stationed all over the world. What's the, is Alaska the coldest place you've been stationed? Yes, no doubt. How cold does it get here? Uh, the coldest that I've seen it uh, over the last couple of years is about negative 25 degrees. And how about the hottest place you've ever been stationed? al Udeed Air Base, uh, Qatar, at about 2 o'clock in the afternoon. When we see you in an airport or somewhere else and we want to show our appreciation oftentimes we'll say thank you for your service is that the best thing for us to say to say thank you or, or what what would you like to hear you know that is the most humbling thing that i think any service member can hear from the public we are called to do this job and when somebody just stops us and says thank you that means a lot yeah. well thank you and thank you for doing 94 feet yeah you're welcome thanks jay is that your first 94 feet on a, on a military base? It was the first with somebody who could kill me with their bare hands. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, Patricia Shank, yeah. the, the commander here the, the, of the joint base, is an amazing leader. And when she talked about her passion for innovation, I was absolutely blown away. It was so inspiring. And she told me a story about uh, two airmen and what it takes to unload all of the jet fuel from one of these F-22s. It's a three-hour process. And the, the airmen would leave some with, with jet fuel all over them. It would be very difficult. There would be some that would spill. And she has a, an innovation uh, room that basically you can go in and, and solve practical problems that you're dealing with. And uh, two of these airmen went in, and one of them, when he was doing his laundry, noticed the, the no-drip no spout on, on the laundry determin, uh, detergent and said, why can't we use these, this on the hoses that we use to offload the fuel? went in and used a 3D printer and designed his own spout, wow. no drip spout. And now a three hour process takes 45 minutes. Wow, what a great story. And she's trying to scale it throughout the entire Air Force right, right. now. That's one of her tasks. I mean, it was it was incredible listening to that story. And it, two 19 year old airmen came up with that. Amazing. It, you know, you don't realize how young they are until you meet them and shake their hands. You know, a lot of the people stationed at the base are the same age as these young men were watching playing basketball tonight. Yeah, and how uh, how inspiring is, is that for these players that see the commitment of our men and women in uniform? And you, know, you talk about commitment in athletics, and it, it doesn't compare. Uh, it's just a shadow of a shadow uh, of what our men and women in, in uniform commit to. It's, it's really incredible. That last foul a couple of minutes ago, by the way, on Washington as Stewart banks it in. Nicely done. was on Jaden McDaniels, his second. So McDaniels has had to go to the bench. Amir Wright has checked back in for the Huskies. Well, Isaiah Stewart, very impressive. He's a good passer. He can run, and he shoots it well. But that was a strong move that he made. Great pass. And a nice left-handed lay in there by Vital. Getting the ball inside and then a nice dive down to the rim by Vital. That was impressive. This is a good passing team. And a three at the other end by Nazea Carter, the leading returning scorer the Huskies have at just over eight points per game. Mike Hopkins really believes that it's Naz Carter's time. 
Uh, he's always been efficient with the ball, this, you know, an elite athlete, but he's played behind older players. Well, Vital didn't want the shot the first time around. The second time he did, and he knocked it down. Well, you notice that Vital's not catching the ball at the free throw line. He's catching it right near the charge circle, and that's too deep. I mean, those are easy shots that right now Washington is giving up. They've got to do a better job of discouraging those passes from getting that deep. It's one thing to give up a 15-footer around the free throw line. It's another thing to give up a shot right in front of the rim because then you're you're giving up a layup essentially with an opportunity to foul. Amir Wright just called for a foul. Look at the disparity in the fouls. That's now six on Washington, just one on Baylor at exactly the midway point of the first half here in Anchorage. Yeah. 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 Little slide of the feet right there. Elijah Hardy very fortunate. He didn't pick up a foul up top. He had two hands on the ball handler on Davion Mitchell and wasn't called for it. And Mitchell wound up turning it over as a result. Hardy with the ball right now, the sophomore from Oakland. Because Quade Green only became eligible a few days ago when Washington took an August trip to Italy, Hardy was the starting point guard. Got a lot of valuable minutes, and now he figures to back up Green, or in this case, play alongside him. A lot of switching right now out of the man-to-man -man by Baylor. Washington should be able to take advantage of that, or at least try to. And Last several possessions, the Huskies have done a good job of looking to get the ball inside. Mike Hopkins wants to play inside out. Tipped out of bounds by Stewart. It stays with Baylor. Stewart does such a good job of getting low and wide. He looks to, to the middle and just makes a nice move and gets to that left shoulder for the jump hook. He gets into that move so strong. Now Washington, right now, it's gone back to man-to-man. -to -man. Which they're fully capable of playing. You can see the bio blast for Isaiah Stewart. We had a chance to talk with him yesterday, and, and I mean, he's a force and an attacker out of the court, but he's about the nicest young man you'll ever meet. Really nice, yeah. very personable, really nice young man. And Jaden McDaniels, also really nice, mm -hmm. but a lot, lot quieter. Vital no look pass, tough catch there by Clark. Fade away over Stewart will go. Tough shot by Tristan Clark. That's the kind of shot that Stewart wants to force. But he just made it coming off that knee injury last. He shot 74% from the field last year before he had that left knee injury that he was lost for the season. Well, and Stewart's going to go right back at him. And what a weapon that jump hook is for that young man. If he keeps getting that kind of low post position with two feet in the paint when he catches it, he's going to score 30, maybe more. You have to think they're going to continue to go to him. And if there's a double that comes, he's a good passer. Now got a switch. Van Du, the kick out. Butler knocks down the three, his second of the game. Remember, coming off a 30 point effort against Central Arkansas. And Baylor for the second game in a row, lighting it up from beyond the arc. And Elijah Hardy helped off, got caught in no man's land, couldn't get back out in time. You got to get out there and make him put the ball on the deck. Butler is such a good play at 31 last year against Kansas. Carter rises up for the jumper, left it a little short. Butler and stolen away by the Huskies. How about the defense by Carter? Bay steps into a three, won't go. Boy, good hands again, so much length. They're going to get so many deflections. And they're going to get a bucket at the other end from Naz Carter. Carter got bumped a little bit. Carter is an excellent dunker. A little surprised he didn't go up and try to put a highlight reel together. His game last year, he had a game against Oregon State. I watched the tape of it last night. The guys don't have that many highlight dunks in a career as he had <laughs> against the Beavers in Corvallis. Washington's going to have a lot of highlights this year. Again, tremendous athleticism on this team. Van Du from the wing misses the three. Tough shot. But Stewart's a little bit tired. A whistle or a timeout, rather, coming on the next whistle. There's the good passing that he's capable of. And Green, a little off balance, a little out of control, and an offensive foul, his second. I think that's the third offensive foul in this first half for Washington. Player control foul, whistle on number 55. Knock, knock. Who's there? Putin. 
Putting who? Putting this F-22 Raptor in your airspace, son. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Reese's and PlayStation Now. Experience hundreds of incredible games available on demand. Back here in Anchorage, Dan Schulman, Jay Billis, Seth Greenberg, the Armed Forces Classic. We talked a little bit about the weather. It's actually been unseasonably warm up here in Anchorage the last few days. Temperatures up in the 40s, lots of blue sky and sunshine today. A great day to be outdoors a little bit here in the middle of November. We're going to go cross court now. I believe Coach Greenberg. I believe he's got Coach Yeah, I got Coach Drew right here. Coach, great start to the game. Last two possessions, they went inside to Stewart. What kind of adjustment do you need to make? Why well, you don't have errors because of turnovers. I'm losing mine because of turnovers. We got eight of them, three of them that media and uh, uh, unforced ones. So we got to do a better job taking care of the ball. Any adjustment defensively on Stewart? Uh, well, we're good in the half court right now, except for Stewart. So we're going to give him a little more attention on the catch. You got it. Thanks, man. Well, both coaches probably unhappy in losing their hair. Both teams, Jay, have eight turnovers already. Yeah, and a few of the turnovers for Washington have come off of uh, offensive fouls. So they've got to be a little more judicious with how they attack. But Washington going back to that essentially 2-3 zone. But you know, Dan, they bring the wings way up. So it's distorted. And you really have to do a good job of moving the ball and overloading it and make these young players. Some of these slides can be difficult for young players. It's complicated uh, to learn the way Mike Hopkins and, and Syracuse, you, know, you got most of it from Syracuse, to learn these complicated slides. If you move the ball, you have a chance to catch them in rotation. Stewart's gone to the bench. McDaniels is back into the game with two fouls. It's vital inside, and he's missed a shot from in close on each of the last two trips. To your point, they're going to give up. That little shot in the middle, but now Vital with a steal, and there's nothing they can do to defend that one. Well, you cannot defend offensive rebounds, and you cannot defend runouts, and that was just a simple guard-to-guard -guard pass. Need to make a pass fake and let Vital shoot the gap and take advantage of it, but that was... You can't call it telegraphed anymore is it with the internet. <laughs> Whatever it was, yeah. it was... He gave away the URL. <laughs> and led to a dunk on the other end. Vital has been a big part of this game, aptly named when he came in off the bench. Into the game now for Baylor, Matthew Meyer, a 6'9", a sophomore from Austin, Texas. He can shoot it. And now we get a foul on the floor going against Washington as Baylor continues to exert its authority on the offensive glass. That's just what Baylor does. I mean, they have been among the top ten in the country in offensive rebounding over the last several years. It's part of the Baylor culture now. And that young man, Mark Vidal, one of the best offensive rebounders in the country. You can see with that frame at 6'5", he can clear space in a hurry and leave you with a couple of bruises on top of it. Last year averaged better than three and a half offensive rebounds per game. As the first one goes down to the front end for Freddie Gillespie. What a story he is from St. Paul, Minnesota. Such a hard worker, but he was a Division III player and transferred from Carleton College, became a walk-on at Baylor, and now in the starting lineup. I mean, how often do you hear that? Yeah, it really is remarkable. You go back to uh, really even before high school, he never played organized basketball until eighth grade and then had a couple of serious injuries in his high school career, which is why he wound up at Division III. Maybe the most amazing part, as a freshman at his at Carlton in D3, he only played 16 minutes the whole season. And just did a really nice job of defending a ball screen, a little step up, and just an excellent job of moving his feet, shutting that off. And he's having to guard Isaiah Stewart right now, which is a he is a complete load. My goodness. Clark inside. Almost a little bit of a screen there by Gillespie. He was between Clark and Stewart. So Stewart couldn't defend it, but we get a foul going against Baylor. Tomorrow we've got two big games with college football playoff implications on ABC and the ESPN app at noon Eastern. It'll be uh, Penn State taking on Minnesota, then at 7.30, 
Clemson squares off with NC State. McDaniels, Stewart, and a foul. Nice pass by Jaden McDaniels. Boy, that is quite a tandem that Washington has of young superstars. And as they continue to get experience and get stronger, they're going to cause a lot of problems in the Pac-12. This is the first time in program history the Huskies have had three McDonald's All-Americans on the roster at the same time. Stewart, McDaniels, and Quade Green, who started his career at Kentucky. Stewart, no. Great effort from the weak side there by Nas Carter, but he couldn't get it to go. What a rebound by Tristan Clark. Myers steps into a three. He is not shy. And what a rebound there by McDaniels. That was a possession where all five guys in purple went to the defensive glass, and that's got to be the way they play. You can't leak out early, especially against a good offensive rebounding team like Baylor. You know, talking to some people on the Washington staff, Mike Hopkins, we watched practice yesterday. He is right in there in the middle of everything, and from what we understand, this is his third year. He has suffered just in practice one broken nose and four black eyes four separate occasions he's gotten a black eye and i asked you know sure like, it's from practice yeah <laughs> i said you know did he get hit in the face with a pass or something they were like no like running into players players running into him well, at some point you have to acknowledge you're a little bit older <laughs> but hop hop played at syracuse under jim Beheim. Comes from Orange County, California, played at modern day. Great passing. And a contest at the rim. Gillespie screaming for a foul. Doesn't get the call. Behind the back, McDaniels. Tough pull up. How about that? What a talent. Long arm to high release. He is a multi level scorer that's got some craftiness to his game. And he's just scratching the surface of how good he's going to be. And look how good he is now. A deep three, a little bit short by Davion Mitchell, the transfer from Auburn. Well, McDaniels brought that rebound down with one hand. He brought that down just with his left hand and then started the break. I mean, he could, he can initiate offense at his size. Going into a little horn set. And now a 5-4 ball screen. Good pass. Stewart surrounded. Tried to follow up his own miss, but it's Baylor ball. Mitchell, nice look ahead to Clark. Well, that was a big time break. The rim run by Clark and the delivery by Davion Mitchell. And Carter, uh, yet another Washington turnover. They're 12. He's trying to go too fast. But Baylor, that was a textbook break. Clark running the floor and a beautiful pass from Davion Mitchell. Ten-point lead for the Bears. Let's send it back to the studio again and check in with John Brickley. The ESPN would also like to thank the University of Alaska Anchorage and Alaska Airlines Arena for hosting the annual Armed Forces Classic. Women who fight find their courage by keeping faith with each other and with the long line of warriors who have come before. That's why combat units love to preserve their history. They are but a link in a chain, connected by tradition and myth and by old frame photos. And that's why the 600 ride into the valley. So if you're ever wondering if fighter pilots had their own private bar and if it's really a, about the coolest place you've ever been, the answer is yes to both questions. And we were lucky enough to get to spend a little time in there. There are two different uh, squadrons of fighter pilots on the base here in Anchorage. There are the Dicemen and there are the Bulldogs. And there's a friendly rivalry, but it is really quite the rivalry. It is quite the rivalry. <laughs> we found out quite a bit about it. You'll get to see 
More of that at halftime as we uh, shared a beverage with the Diceman. Out of bounds, it'll be Washington ball. Now, had the Bulldogs asked, we would have been just as happy to share a beverage with the Bulldogs. Right? Darn right. But the Diceman asked first. We are non discriminating <laughs> when it comes to sharing beverages. And it is a great room. I mean, we were talking about everything that's hanging on the walls and all the history. Every, you know, every every single artifact in that room has a story, tells a story. Stewart the kick out. Nice extra look from Green to Carter, and he'll splash down a three. Carter really took his time to get that shot off. His feet were set, and yet another assist for Quade Green. I think that's his seventh assist for this first half. But you heard LaFonso Ellis and John Crispin in the studio talk about the turnovers for Washington. Washington has 12 turnovers. And when you cough the ball up, it's not just the fact that you're putting your, your defense in scramble if it's a live ball turnover. You're also taking away from your team the opportunity to get a, a shot attempt, the opportunity to get an offensive rebound if you miss, and the opportunity to get fouled. All three good three good things for the offense that you're, you're denying yourself. And Washington has denied itself a lot of opportunities on the offensive end by not being secure with the ball and then Butler trying to make something happen with the shot clock running down and he turns it over that's nine turnovers committed by Baylor right now Washington I think one of their problems on the offensive end has been they've gone a little bit too fast and going back into a set see that that's just not a not a good pass by Quade Green and Isaiah Stewart has to do a better job of holding his man off and getting some contact so that he can receive that pass and step toward it he let it come to him, and that resulted in the turnover. That's the 13th. In some ways, between the turnovers and all the early threes that the Bears had, the Huskies are very fortunate to be down only seven in this game. But one thing they don't do is foul. There haven't been a lot of free throws shot in this game. Nice job by Nas Carter to get out of Maceo Teague. Vital the kick. Teague the three, in and out. Vital had it for a moment, and then we got a foul going against Baylor. And it'll be on Vital. Really good job by Hamir Wright to get in there and rebound. You know, early on, Washington was leaking out a little bit when the shot went up. And that can't happen. They've got to get all five guys on the defensive glass, and then they can go. A new face into the game now for Washington, Nate Roberts, a redshirt freshman from Washington DC who played extremely well on the Huskies tour in Italy averaging about 10 points and 10 rebounds per game. Well, he's a lefty and another guy with a ridiculous wingspan. He's got a 7 6 wingspan. And I think we have a potential hook and hold situation which is what the officials are going to the monitor for. This would be the first first hook and hold for us of the new <laughs> season. <laughs> another bucket list for you another bucket list item here in the 2019 20 season. 31-24, Baylor leading Washington, just the fourth meeting ever between these two programs. They have not met since 1955. And I think it was before all that. I think it was... I think it actually might have been that. I think it's... it's no, it was that. See. See, yeah. Watch this here. There, that's where it happened there. Oh, you're right. With with uh, Vital and, and right. Amir Wright. Didn't look like there was a whole lot to it. So the original foul call went on vital 11 in white. Just a common foul. Just a common yep. foul. Okay. They looked at it, decided it was just a common foul. You know, there, there are times where it can be a hook, but not a hook and hold. And then it can be a hold, but there was no hook involved. Well, that's just crazy talk. You know, the and is the most important <laughs> word in that. So you can have a hook without a hold and a hold without a hook. Yes. I learn something new every day. Nearing the end of the first half again. Remember, we've got two games for you tonight. We've got the University of Alaska Anchorage taking on the Coast Guard. A game with a lot of military flavor, of course, with the Coast Guard playing. That'll be the second game. It's on ESPNU about 20 minutes after the conclusion of this one. And right now, Jada McDaniels has to figure out a way to stay out of foul trouble. That's Sir. number three. He just lowered that shoulder. And when Roberts went out to set that ball screen, there was a switch that put Vital on to McDaniels. Vital did such a great job of moving his feet to stay in front. And even though Vital's a lot stronger and it would take a, a pretty good knock on the part of McDaniels to put him on his 
back. Anytime you lower that shoulder and your shoulder hits the chest of the defender, they're calling a charge. Gillespie, the Washington bench screaming for a travel. They'll eventually get the turnover as it's out of bounds and back to the Huskies. Good job of swarming the ball by Washington. And Stewart did a very nice job of not letting Gillespie get the ball up on the rim. Carter baseline smothered there by Gillespie. A block with the left hand. That was beautiful. Vital and Gillespie stripped. Boy, Hamir Wright went down. He got that strip while he's still on the ground. And how about that steal by Mitchell? Great take. Wow. We've had takedowns and Vital and Carter got wrapped up, and it looked like Vital had his arms wrapped completely around Carter. Boy, Vital's one of these guys where you say, man, I am glad he is on our side. He is so strong. So he just pulled, he pulled Carter down, and then let go and grabbed him again. It's a weird play. And we understand that a flop warning has been given to Baylor. And this is one of the new rules. They want to take flopping out of the game. So the first offense, if you will, is a warning. The second and beyond, they are Class B technical fouls, which results in one free throw. That's interesting. I would not have thought that was a flop. I thought it was a foul, but they should have just called a foul there. But a one second difference between the game clock and the shot clock. Because if Vital flopped, then you had to think that uh, that Carter flopped as well because he was in front of him, right? Well, and now, now we're going to have a shot clock violation. Right. And time remaining. So the ball should be going back over to Washington with somewhere in the neighborhood of a second, maybe even less than that. Back to the monitor to find out how much time to put back on the clock. But it hit the hit the rim there, so shouldn't be a shot clock violation, right? I would think not. Yeah, hit the rim. And that just should be the end of the half. The initial, like long before this, the initial the shot hit. It the didn't rim. hit the rim. It didn't it hit, hit the, the bottom of the backboard. Well, they're going to they're going to call it. Yeah. So it is halftime. No shot clock violation. And that'll put, a, put us midway through game number one tonight here in Alaska with the Baylor leading Washington to buy a score of 31 to 24 turnovers. A big part of the story. Washington coughed it up 15 times and the Baylor turned those 15 turnovers into 15 points. Seth Greenberg is with Mike Hopkins. Hop, what's the first thing you can tell your guys in the locker room? Relax. <laughs> Turnovers are just killing us. We're playing too fast. We just got to relax. A lot of young guys. What's the one thing you like you guys are doing, and what's the one thing you're going to really try to get done in the second I think half? The big thing is, you know, we talked about taking away the shooters. They get three early three pointers, awareness, and then rebound. I thought we were doing a decent job rebounding, but we're not. We got to capitalize in transition. We're turning it over too much. Great. Right, thanks, man. Thank Appreciate you, it. Hopkins head coach of the Washington Huskies. He's going to tell his guys to relax. Seven point deficit at the half after the break. We'll send it to the studio for the Jeep halftime report. This halftime report is presented by Jeep. Get a great deal at the Jeep Black Friday event. Part oh, of the annual okay, tradition good. of the Armed Forces Classic is our head coaches motivate and guide the troops through a fun and entertaining pickup game with plenty of bragging rights on the line. Let's go. Come on. We got it's all about energy. You know that. Come on. We got to play harder than them. Now, Coach Tang, he he he, lo he loves to yell. So if he starts yelling, that means we start cranking it up, okay, all right? You got to lead me here a little bit because I don't know who the hell is who, but let's roll. Keep rotating. Charge, yeah. That's good, D. Yeah, look at middle. Go. Go. Oh, no. Yeah, we in it now. We in it now. All right, Army in 
the house. Our ball. Wait, wait. Oh, that was awful. That was awful. What's he doing? That's awful call. Nice. And one, and one. Hey, this when we this when we close. Yep. Win on three. One, two, three. Win. Go. All the way. All the way. And one. Limit turnovers, you guys are good. You guys are really good. All right, and wait, big rebound. Come on, boy. Yeah! yeah. yeah. One, two, three, four. Yeah. yeah! We'll be back to Alaska for the start of the second half after this. This has been the Jeep Halftime Report. Welcome back to the Armed Forces Classic. The United States. At halftime, uh, a number of members in the military re-enlisting to the delight of everybody here in the building in Anchorage. We've got Baylor and Washington. We've got some real nice military flavor as well. We've got Alaska Anchorage taking on Coast Guard on the U. About 20 minutes after the conclusion of this game, we got a seven-point lead for Baylor heading to the second half. Washington with a lot of turnovers. When they held on to the ball, they were pretty good. When they did not hold on to the ball, Baylor made them pay. That was really the issue. And early on in the game, Baylor was hitting threes. They had five of their first seven, but then went 0 for 6. So Washington did a pretty good job on the defensive end, but they had 15 turnovers in that first half. And really an important thing is going to be Jaden McDaniels. He's got three fouls, as does Hamir Wright. So they've got to continue to play good defense without fouling and not pick up any more offensive fouls. And both of them on the floor to start the second half, as is Seth Greenberg. Yeah, an interesting first half. Mike Hopkins, when he was coming off the court, said, you know, they've got to relax. I think they've got to slow down, run on opportunity. If you got advantage, disadvantage, run an attack. If not, that big fellow's got to touch the ball every time down the floor. Isaiah Stewart, he gets touches. Good things happen for Washington. All right, Coach, thank you. Underway with the Baylor having the first possession of the second half as we check out our first half stats brought to you by Vanguard. Corner three. By Jared, Jared Butler. Jared Butler did a really nice job with the shot fake. You know, shot fake, let the defender fly by, and that was an easy standstill jump shot. And Butler coming off a 30-point effort against Central Arkansas. Has a dozen now in this game. Nice interior pass. Stewart to McDaniels and good patience on the inside by Jaden McDaniels. Oh, an excellent job of moving into the middle of the lane when Isaiah Stewart caught that ball. And again, Stewart showing that he is a really good passer. Boy, Tristan Clark, I wonder if you know, Scott Drew said to him, you got to turn and face the basket and make a play when you get the ball there because he did quickly, but he couldn't finish it. Wow, sticking with it is Stewart. Well, he kept it alive with that right hand. Difficult shot by Quade Green with the left. But Stewart kept it alive, knocked it off the backboard, and then was able to go get it. And I think that's a rebound that last year Tristan Clark would have had nine times out of ten. He's still knocking some rust off. Had a, a tough outing against Central Arkansas. I think if I remember right, he only had three points in that game. But certainly looks much better in the first half of this one. Number three on the ESPN 100 coming into the season. And wears Crocs to accommodate size 16 feet. Who knew? I don't care how big your feet are. You don't have to wear Crocs. <laughs> yeah. There are other alternatives. Pretty lame know. excuse. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe he just likes Crocs. <laughs> <laughs> well, again, look at the length with McDaniels at 6'9", out of the top of that zone. I think Baylor can screen the zone and get some opportunities. That was a foul. They play on, and McDaniels has the loose ball for the Huskies. Stewart had his arm down, wasn't straight up and down. What a play Ooh. there. Got Be foul. Behind the back, takes a bump and finishes. He is some kind of skill. That was an and one. Yeah, he is tremendously skilled. Jaden McDaniels, mobile, fluid. And you can see he has perimeter skills. Clark switches hands and draws the foul. 
That's the rebound he could take in himself. He reminds me a little bit of a, a more skilled Jonathan Isaac. Goes behind the back. I thought he got fouled on that play, but still, he goes through the contact and finishes it. And had to sit for a fair period in the first half with those three fouls. How similar in your mind is he to his older brother Jalen, who played at San Diego State? Uh, they're different. Uh, I, I think this young man, the, the, the sky is the limit for his talent level. He's going to get stronger, and he's going to get become an even better perimeter shooter, and he can already shoot it. And I think you're looking at, at the a prototype NBA big guy going forward. That's the way the league is trending. Well, Stewart is wide open. He's got to get the ball. Give it to him. He is working hard for position against Clark. Immediate double team. He looks opposite. That's a big time pass. McDaniels misses the slam, misses the follow, but he's fouled. Well, you just don't see that many young big guys make that over the shoulder cross court pass. See McDaniels wearing two uh, two different colored shoes. He's not wearing Crocs at any time. <laughs> He lied to us, though. We asked him yesterday at practice, are those your gamers? He said, no, nah, I, I don't wear the pink one during the game. I just wear two of the purples. And it's well, he see. wore the right pink one yesterday, so technically he, he didn't fib at all. This way he's wearing the, the left pink one. See, I took detailed notes yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> but do you know what's on the right shoe, the, that little silver kind of clasp on the front of the right shoe? And for reasons that McDaniels doesn't even know, these are Star Wars themed shoes that the Huskies are wearing. So there you go. It was at about at this point last year where I said, you know, that guy's wearing two different shoes, Jay. And he said, they're all wearing they're two all different wearing shoes. They're all wearing two different shoes. <laughs> I knew what you meant. <laughs> Isn't it make fun of Seth and I? We'll get there. Yeah. It's still early. <laughs> Floater from the baseline, and Butler's having a big night for Baylor. Well, Baylor's going to have some opportunities to get the ball along the baseline, but they're just, those are twos. And Washington is not as concerned about giving up a two. That was a float or two, and really not an easy shot. Right for three. Great block out by Freddie Gillespie. And a full head of steam for Macy O.T. And a block is going to be the call underneath on right. And the bucket, they're counting the bucket. He must have been in the restricted area. Yeah, he was. No basket. No basket. Oh, I thought he uh, he said it counted. Yeah, I was he, very he did. He just that. he just corrected the call. I thought maybe there might have been a goal. That's what I was yeah, thinking. I mean, no. how could you count the basket? Yeah. No, Jerry Pollard just corrected himself. No basket, so it'll be two free throws coming for Macy O.T. So when, when Jerry Pollard first made that signal, I thought he was calling the charge. Teak, 44% three-point shooter in his two years at UNC Asheville, originally from Cincinnati. So Teague and Mitchell last year sitting out as transfers. They went to Walnut Hills High School in Cincinnati. And UNC Asheville has produced some really good players that have transferred to high major play. You remember, remember one of the last guys from UNC Asheville that had a, a great career at a, a high major was Andrew Rousey mm -hmm. at Marquette. He could shoot it. Really shoot it. Yeah. And I think more and more you're seeing guys transfer from mid-majors to high-majors, whether it's like somebody like Teague did or in a grad transfer, which is not Teague. Yeah. But you're seeing it a lot with grad transfers where guys are finishing off at a higher level. Well, they, they become better players, and you know, mm. Teague probably would have wanted to go to a place like Baylor or... He was recruited by Louisville and Xavier and, and Virginia when he opened up his, when he decided he wanted to transfer. But he wasn't recruited by those places out of high school. And so, you know, my thing has always been, and I know a lot of coaches would differ with this, but, you know, when a coach does a great job, they go to a higher major, or they go to a higher major job. When a player blossoms, why can't the player aspire to yep. more? Oh, fair point. And Scott Drew has taken a lot of transfers over his time in Waco. Turnaround there by T. I like him. He is a good player. You know, Baylor, as it is, was pointed out to us yesterday, 
It's one of only six Power Five programs that has won 18 or more games 12 consecutive years. And they're in some pretty heady company with the other five. Great elevation there by Carter. You're talking about the blue bloods of the sport and Baylor have won 18 or more games 12 consecutive years. Look at the company the Bears are keeping. Well, Scott Drew's done a really nice job with this program. Nice play to get the ball along the baseline. That was a heck of a, a shot by Freddie Gillespie. Eight point lead for Drew's Bears, 15-59 to go. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by BMW. The ultimate driving machine. <laughs> Baylor by eight over Washington here in the Armed Forces Classic in Anchorage. Unquestionably, though, the big news of the day in college basketball is what surrounded James Wiseman, the number one incoming recruit from Memphis, who was declared ineligible just about an hour before their game with UIC tonight for accepting $11,500 from Penny Hardaway two years ago when Hardaway was a high school coach and he helped Wiseman and his family move from Nashville to Memphis and then Wiseman started playing for Penny again when Penny was still a high school coach and um, after an emergency restraining order was issued by a court Wiseman played so he was declared ineligible, and then an hour later, Memphis got the restraining order, and he played. He played in the game tonight against UIC, 17 points, 9 rebounds, 5 blocks, in an easy win. And then the NCAA came out immediately afterwards and basically said, it's up to Memphis to play guys who are eligible. They have to know if there's an eligibility issue, and the NCAA feels there is an eligibility issue regardless of what the court ruled today. There is actually an NCAA bylaw that says if you go into a court and receive a restraining order and you play that player and later on it is vacated or turns out it is wrong uh, or otherwise dismissed, then you are on the hook for severe penalties, including the NCAA could declare Memphis ineligible to play in the NCAA tournament this year. This year. This year. Right. That That is a possibility. I'm not saying it's going to happen. There are all kinds of options they have. It's bylaw 19, uh, a section of that bylaw. So there are all kinds of penalties that could come from this of play, knowingly playing an ineligible player. Uh, and I'm really surprised that Memphis decided to play Wiseman while this thing was up in the air. Uh, because if, if the NCAA wants to on Monday, they can go into federal court. There, There is no way that this, this sort of restraining order is going to hold up long term. No way. And so it's really surprising that Memphis took this action and played Wiseman uh, against UIC tonight. And, and who knows, maybe like now selfishly, I'd like to see them play him against Oregon on Tuesday night because we're doing that game. I want to watch him play. <laughs> uh, okay, let's back up because there's a lot to unpack here. We can only do so much of it while we're calling this game but again Penny Hardaway I don't think anybody's disputing the facts no but Memphis admitted it Memphis that admitted that he that Penny Hardaway helped the family eleven thousand five hundred dollars they say Wiseman himself didn't know about it and doesn't this, matter this was to help the family move from Nashville to Memphis Hardaway was not the coach at Memphis then he was a high school coach Wiseman had not committed to Memphis then he was heading into his junior year in high school um, in your mind do the in do the allegations does you know does the crime fit the punishment it, it well it's simple I mean this is a very simple NCAA issue it, 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 and I know you're just giving facts there but none of that stuff matters when Penny Hardaway uh, gave money to cover help help with expenses for relocating for the family he was a booster of Memphis he went to school there has given money to the university he was a booster of Memphis uh, so it, it, it's a simple eligibility issue and it would ha if this happened anywhere, this would be the result. Uh, the, the unusual thing is that it, uh, that when the eligibility issue was was brought up and it was flagged that you could be playing an ineligible player, most every school I know of would hold the player out out of caution while they tried to work it out. Now, who knows whether it be worked out in the long run? I don't know. But playing him, going into court and getting a, a temporary restraining order. Uh, is a an extraordinary measure and look they got it from a local Shelby County judge and and there's no way that thing holds up long long term in my judgment 
so let's go back to the booster aspect because Penny Hardaway has been deemed to be a booster than it is an infraction. It is. It, it, yeah. It's no question right. it was an infraction. The question is what's what's going to be the sanction. And we may not find out. Well, we may find out as early as Monday. Memphis takes on Oregon Tuesday on ESPN. and snow clearing equipment unknown to those of us who live in any of the other 49 states. An F-22 Raptor would be a $150 million paperweight. No plow, no runway. No runway, no takeoff and landing. The men and women who operate the plows on the base are the MVPs of the base when the base is in Alaska as, uh, as it was said during that piece of video nothing works if the planes can't take off and land and the planes have to take off and land Baylor in this game an excellent offensive rebounding team they've got five total offensive rebounds not a single second chance point that basket's going to go. Jamal Bay a little bit shaken up for Washington. He and Vital collided. And as is usually the case, the guy who collides with Vital gets the worst of it. And he took one right in the chops. And he's still looking down. I'm not sure whether he lost a contact lens or something, but. Take him out of the game and have a look and see exactly what's going on right now. Holding the bridge of his nose. And oh, the left side of Vital's head hitting the look like the nose of Bay. No flop warning on that one. No. <laughs> Runner won't go for Green. Long rebound to Carter. McDaniels. But when he wants to get a shot off, he's going to get a shot off. Just a question of whether he hits it. Clark inside, bumping with Stewart. Stewart didn't give an inch, and it's not like Clark is not a strong guy or anything. Yeah, you cannot move Isaiah Stewart off of his spot. Got away with a walk there. <laughs> wow, and muscles it up and in. He is a big time talent. Uh, it looked like he got away with uh, some steps to start. Yeah, they, they, that was a that was a walk, but man, he really did a nice job of keeping his eyes up on the rim and finishing that play. Washington has to get stops here. They turned the ball over so much in the first half, put themselves at a disadvantage. Good fake, and then just too hot of a pass. And too close of a range for Clark to come up with it. Yeah, overall, the defensive game plan for Washington has worked pretty effectively. You know, they've done a good job of limiting second chance opportunities, which is really difficult against Baylor. And for the most part, after a, a, an early start where they gave up a number of threes, they've really defended the three-point line pretty well. It's the fact their offense has not been as good. Boy, they got to start passing the ball. That was an offensive foul there. Just too much dribbling by Naz Carter. Boy, in just eight or nine seconds of spectacular defense by Mitchell, moving his feet and staying in front of his man. But the easy way to deal with that is give the ball up. Naz Carter's got nowhere to go. He's passed the ball. Washington staying in the zone. Now with Green and Hardy at the top of it. So a smaller look, although Hardy comes up with a steal. Carter into the lane. Left hand won't go. And Stewart off his fingertips. Pull up, Bandu. Yes. Boy, what a big shot by Devontae Bandu from Mississauga, Ontario. Just a big energy guy when he comes into the ballgame. And after Washington was unable to get that shot to go, that led to the runout. And Bandu just gets it in the middle of the floor. Nobody picks up the ball. A 
he was just able to waltz into that jump shot. And that was as open of a shot as Baylor has has had in this game. Vandu came off the bench for 15 points, three of four from beyond the arc against Central Arkansas on Tuesday. And this is the largest lead of the game for the Bears. McDaniels, not afraid to drive into traffic, had it rejected, got it back. Oh. And a slam on the baseline for Carter. But Washington really stuck with it there. What a play by Naz Carter. A spectacular athlete. And that's the kind of finish that he needs to go for. Big time play by Naz Carter. Terrific pass. When you're having a bad day and break a $400 million airplane, these are the guys who will come scoop you up from the tundra. Their real gift, though, is not making fun of you, but guessing how many years of a first lieutenant's salary it would take to replace a Raptor. You're welcome, Flyboy. Yeah, some of the specialty jobs that are performed on the base, Joint Base, Elmerdorf Richardson, Jay Bear here in Anchorage. Everybody's got their job to do. Everybody knows what it is. And Jay, everybody does it brilliant. Just absolute studs in the armed forces. Just such, such a, it's so inspiring to be around him. Nice turnaround there by Gillespie. Well, he's had a good game. He had 14.7 rebounds against Central Arkansas. And he's had some really good moments in this game. He's been a, a presence in the paint. And he's finished plays. That was a good call by the officials there. That was uh, Marcus Pettigrew who made that call. Uh, a travel that wasn't always called in the past, but Stewart kind of did a little hop step with both his feet before he started his move. And if you shuffle both your feet, it's a walk. And they're trying to cut down on some of the traveling in the game. Mitchell kicks it back out to Butler. Tough one. Around and out. Kept alive by Gillespie, but here comes McDaniels. Four on two. And they don't get anything easy out of it. Yeah, really good job by Baylor to get back. First of all, they've made it difficult for McDaniels to get all the way to the rim. Fouls going on. Vital of Baylor. Sunday afternoon at 1 o'clock Eastern time on ESPN and the ESPN app. It'll be the Sunshine State rivalry game. Florida State and number six, Florida. You won't want to miss that one. Florida State, one of the better defenders in the country. Trent Forrest playing for Leonard Hamilton. They are going against a team that I really think has a chance. I, I think Florida's really got a chance this year. Mike White has got... As good a team as he's had there. Remember, he went to the Elite Eight a few years ago. And bring it in, Kerry Blackshear, as you talked Huge. about in the first half. I mean, what a. He's a great player. Oh, my. You can run so much offense from him. Let's bring in Coach Greenberg with more on the Gators. Yeah, the Gators can win a national championship. Andrew Nebhardt had a great experience this past summer playing with the Canadian national team. I'm sure you're excited about that, Dan. Yes, very well. Uh, they've got legitimate depth in the perimeter. Sky Lewis is obviously a world-class athlete. Trey Mann, this is a very complete team. My question is, last year they played at a very slow pace. We know they're going to defend. Can they get some easy baskets in transition this year with their athleticism? I think that'll be interesting to watch. Yeah, I think they will play faster. And they'll be much better defensively. Scotty Lewis coming in at McDonald's All-American is a great defender. But boy, how about that play, getting the ball inside with an angle to Isaiah Stewart. When he gets a foot in the paint, forget it. Bandu almost coughed it up. Gets it back. Three from the wing, and wow. he rattles it home. What a great cut by Bandu to come right behind Freddie Gillespie and get that ball to be able to shoot behind him. Used him essentially as a screen, but also bailed him out. That was a big-time play by Devontae Bandu. Well, Baylor's got so many good guards who can make plays. Green, no. Look at McDaniel skying for the rebound, and another call going against Baylor. Well, McDaniels is talented. It's just... That talent oozes 
almost a run out for Naz Carter, but a terrific job of cutting right behind Gillespie to take that little pass back. Like Devontae Bandu, he had a terrific game against Central Arkansas, knocked down three of his four three-point attempts, and also had seven rebounds to go with his 15 points. And Baylor now eight for 16 from three-point range as we bring in Seth Greenberg again. Yeah, Baylor has four of what I call bowl guards. They're not point guards. They're not two guards. They're just guys who can make plays and make shots. They're mature. Look at the body type of these guards. Physical, tough, can beat you off the bounce, shoot the three. And that's why they're picked second in the Big 12, and that's why they're a team that a lot of people think can make a legitimate run in the tournament. They've kind of found a new identity. When Tristan Clark went out last year, they went to a four-guard offense, and they went to a three-point shooting team mentality. And the mixture of last year and then this year's team with their size makes this a very dangerous Baylor team. And they're doing all this without Mario Kegler, too, that left the team, uh, what, a couple weeks ago. Uh, who transferred in from Mississippi State and had some really good moments. He you know, did a really good job last year after Tristan Clark went out with his injury. So they're, they're down a player that they expected in Kegler to, to really be one of their leading scorers. Clark. Stewart bothered him, and it's turned back over to Washington. Clark should have shot that ball because... You know, Stewart hit him when he went up. Didn't seem, obviously, not enough contact for the officials to call it on the pass, but they would have called it on the shot. Pull up by Green, left it short. Yeah, that little horn set, that's a shot that Quade Green needs to knock down. Butler got McDaniels in the air and banks one home. What a pretty play. And a smart play by Jared Butler because he knows that McDaniels is in some foul trouble and doesn't want to pick one up and took advantage of it. Stewart got his man in the air and lays it in with a left hand. How about those feet? I mean, that's big time footwork. And a lot of a lot of people say, you know, up and under when a guy, you know, kind of double clutches. This is an up and under move. Up under. That's what an, a real up and under move is. It's not just when you double clutch near the basket and go from one side of the rim to the other. It's a post move. And that's a big time up and under by the freshman Isaiah Stewart. Or could he have made that move in Crocs is the real question. That's, that's the issue. <laughs> I feel a 94 feet in Crocs coming at some point with you and Isaiah Stewart this year. Only one of us will be wearing them. It won't be me. <laughs> Eight minutes to go in regulation. Baylor has led almost the entire night, and they're up by 11 on Washington right now. Good pass. And an assist for Stewart on the bucket for Carter. Every time Isaiah Stewart touches the ball, something good happens. And he caught that off the block, immediately looked out to Carter, who was ready to shoot. And he was able to take his time. That was a really big possession to cut this to an eight-point game. Eight-point lead, 7.39 to go. Still a lot of ball game left. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Alaska Airlines. Proud to support America's heroes. All Blue the mascot wants is for the humans to see he's a fighter, too. If a droid can ride shotgun for Luke, then why can't he accompany his best friend up in the air? Come on, guys. I'm in the Air Force. That's all he wants. Well, either that or some meat. As the guys told you uh, when we aired that uh, feature during halftime, the Dice Men borrowed Blue, the Bulldog, at some point. They didn't kidnap him. They didn't steal him. They borrowed him. But, or her, I should say. And returned her later on. You want to tell the story about why the call sign of one of the fighter pilots is arson? <laughs> uh, he burned a few things. <laughs> yeah. Jason, that was so, his explanation. Why is your name arson? He goes, well, I burned some stuff. <laughs> <laughs> and then he just kind of trailed off, and we didn't hear the end of the story. So After that, it was all classified information. Basically, your call sign is whatever they find out about you that's embarrassing. Well, in Washington here... I think needs to continue to look for Isaiah Stewart. Both Stewart 
and McDaniels are in double figures along with Naz Carter. Naz Carter's got 19. But Stewart has been so effective when he's gotten the ball inside because he can pass it back out. Remember, Baylor's had a game. This is Washington's first game. And maybe that explains why they've turned it over 19 times now. Well, that was just a bad angle. Boy, Carter just ripped that ball right away. Trying to go coast to coast, and he's rejected by Gillespie, and here come the Bears. That's the third block by Gillespie. Oh, and a block by McDaniels, but a bucket for Baylor. Boy, Gillespie's had a great game. Three blocks, two steals, nine rebounds. And now double figures scoring. He's been terrific. Soft touch for McDaniels. Boy, is he good. One dribble, pull up from the mid-range. He's the real thing. Yeah, he is the real thing. This is a high-level, unselfish. One of the things about both Stewart and McDaniels, they're unselfish. And there's no jealousy at all. I mean, they want to see each other do well. They're, they're great teammates. Look at the length on the zone right now with Quad A Green not in the game, and he's a great player, but just he's six feet tall. They're 6'6, six, 6'6 six, six, six at the top of the zone, and all three guys on the back line are 6'9. Yeah, Quad A Green's had a, a good game, definitely assist wise. He's got nine assists, but he's not been able to score in this one. But every time Washington makes a push, Baylor answers. Well, that, that certainly wasn't a bad shot, but you'd still like to see Washington play inside out. What a pass. And a great cut and lay-in for Teague. Well, you're right about that cut. He continued to move as the ball moved and just found his way underneath the basket. That was a beautifully threaded pass. You know, there are so many things about basketball that some guys just seem to have. Is cutting one of those skills that some guys just know how to do better than other guys? Yes. It's uh, that, That's part of having a great feel for the game, of finding open spots. And Jameer Wright knocks that three down. Another guy that can really shoot. He said had battled some foul trouble in this one. And swarming Bandu on the sideline there. He got rid of it, but it's another rejection. The length of McDaniels comes into play again. And a good decision not to force anything. Bay off the glass, draws a foul. Good drive by Jamal Bay. Bay's a, a sophomore from Las Vegas. He's the cousin of Tyler Bay of Colorado. Just a, a really nice job attacking. I think he can go a little bit stronger at the end to be able to finish that play, not just draw the foul, but be able to, to finish that play to go to the line for an and one. Bay also the Gatorade Player of the Year two years ago as a high school senior in the state of Nevada. After our first game concludes tonight, stick around for Sports Center with Kenny Main and John Anderson. They'll have a couple of diaper dandies encore performances. As Cole Anthony played again tonight, you know that James Wiseman played again tonight, plus the Lakers quest for seven in a row and a breakdown of Alabama and LSU. Sports Center next on ESPN and the ESPN app. So Alabama and LSU are playing this weekend? Yeah, you've heard something I about that. I've heard you? that. <laughs> Who do you think is going to win that one? I, I defer to you, as I like to do in all cases. You're, you're picking LSU, right? No, I'm oh. picking Alabama. Right. If Tua Tungabailoa plays, I think Alabama wins the game. All right, I'll take LSU and dinner down in Portland. How's that? You're going to take dinner? No, yes, I, yes, because LSU will win. <laughs> oh, what a blow! And, it, and it goes in, but no basket. Clark had the... his hands on the rim while the ball was above the cylinder so they wave off the basket offensive basket interference but what a block and this is definitely a meeting at the summit you know, it's unfortunate a bad break it probably would have gone in it looked like it was directly above the rim and coming down straight I think it, it did right go ball. in but had he not touched the rim I mean I oh think I see was, what yeah. you're saying I see what you're saying yeah. yeah but it was definitely the right call yes. because he had his hands on the rim while the ball was above the cylinder boy that's a heck of a block there what an unusual play that was. Meanwhile, it's down to six. Big possession right now for Baylor. So they can get a score here, keep a little bit of distance. 
Great interior passing, but another block. The length of Washington comes into play again. Wow, what a battle. Bears come out with it. Boy, all they had to do was tie it up. Washington had the arrow. Bandu misses from the corner. They scrap again for the loose ball, and it belongs to the Huskies. Boy, this is high level on the glass. The last four or five minutes have been by far the best four or five minutes of this game. We are seeing the talent that both of these teams have right now. Ball's got to go inside Isaiah Stewart. Let him touch it. McDaniels, nowhere to go. But he is fouled. Oh, boy. Butler is called for the foul. And we got a timeout on the floor. Huskies making a push back within six. Back to the Armed Forces Classic. Let's look at the Alaska Airlines taking flight. You know what it's all about, Isaiah Stewart. If Washington's going to win this game, play through the big fella. He gets an angle. He can finish around the rim. When he gets touches, good things happen. He can work to the middle, use his size and his footwork. And then once you establish the big fella, what happens? The defense has to scrape. You relocate, step in threes, or made threes. Washington, they're going to win this basketball game. In the last four minutes, they need to play through Isaiah Stewart in the half court. All right, Coach, thank you. 13 points, six rebounds in Stewart's collegiate debut. We got one player on each team playing with four fouls. Gillespie for Baylor, Wright for Washington, and it's one and one for Jaden McDaniels. Well, and even though McDaniels cleared out, he got a clear out, tried to go one on one, wound up getting fouled. Very fortunate. It looked like I couldn't tell whether Mike Hopkins was motioning for the clear out for McDaniels or he's saying, hey, clear the low post and get it into Stewart. Two pretty good options, though, either, either way you go. 16 now for McDaniels. It is a four point game. The Huskies as close as they've been in a long time. That vital in the middle. And remember, they don't really care if he shoots the ball in there. Nearly a turnover. Shot clock did not reset. Vital from the elbow. A pass to Clark out of bounds. It belongs to Baylor, but there's just one second on the shot clock. McDaniels will be on the ball trying to discourage anything near the rim because that's exactly what Baylor's going to try to do is throw something up near the rim. Bounce pass inside. Well, there's a lot of contact there. And which way is it going? It is staying this way. Baylor will retain possession. I can't believe there wasn't any sort of call there with all that contact. And you know, Washington cannot let that pass go right under the basket. And Mike Hopkins, you can see the look on his face. He knows it. So the, that's essentially an offensive rebound. It's a team rebound. So the shot clock will reset to 20 seconds. That's a new rule this year on an offensive rebound. It doesn't go to th the full 30. It's just like FIBA. Uh, FIBA goes to 14 uh, because of the 24 second clock. But the theory is because you don't have to bring the ball up, it's just, they just want to get the game played faster, more possessions. You don't need the full 30 seconds in the half court. I like the rule. I yeah. don't know how you feel about it, but I, but I really like it. I, I like it too. It, it feels like more possessions. I've heard the you know the flip side of the coin is you know why not pay, make the team that didn't get a defensive rebound pay play a full 30 seconds of D, but I like the more possessions. And I think the answer is because they're selling tickets. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it is the entertainment business. Two and a half to go. Off balance Bay. Bay to the deck. Baylor ball. Bad possession by Washington. And a technical called on Jaden McDaniels. Flop. He, he called it because of a, he saying it was a flop. That's the signal for a flop. And remember, they were warned earlier. This is essentially a delay of game warning. Yeah. So this will be one shot. This is what's known as a Class B technical foul. It's not an unsportsmanlike play or anything like that. It's like hanging on the rim. And it's not a personal either. Right. And Marcus Pettigrew confirming that. So because it's the second defense, it is one free throw for Baylor. They're trying to take flopping out of the game. And flopping isn't just limited to flopping. 
you know, when a guard is driving and he snaps his head back as if he got hit, that kind of falls into the same category. They're trying to take all the all of that kind of stuff out of the game. Yeah, and, and look, there there are flops that go on in the game. Um, I, I think the right way to handle that call, and this is not the official's fault. This is the rule, and they're being told to do this, and they're being held accountable for it. But, I, you know, the, the, the thing you worry about are these charge blocks and all that um, with an intent. What they're worried about here is an intent to deceive. But I think the way you deal with this particular one is don't call it. You don't have to worry about it. It's not that big of a deal. But, but they're being instructed otherwise and being held accountable for it. And the hope is, is that if they call it by the book, the new book, that the then players stop. The, right, that the players yeah. will realize quickly because the coach will point out in film session the next day, you flopped and it cost us a point near the end of the game. Yeah, and and do I think they're going to get flopping out of the game? No, um, I don't think they're going to get it out. But you know, if it makes the rules committee feel better, then go ahead. The best way to get it out is quit calling it because. You know, oftentimes you'll get guys embellishing these charge block calls where people don't fall the way guys go for charges. And they don't call those flops. Uh, but it's a difficult issue. But anytime you say, we're going to get this out of our game, uh, you're probably not. Because yeah, we said the same thing about hook and hold. We're still dealing with it. And the ball returned to point of interruption. It was Baylor ball at the time of the flopping call. So the Bears have it now. Up by 5, 220 to go over the top to Clark. Too strong off the glass. Over the back. Boy, that was another great challenge at the rim. I mean, Isaiah Stewart is a rim protector. When Washington came out to try to double and sort of bum rush the ball, they th Baylor threw it right down along the baseline, and it was only Stewart left to stop a dunk, and he did. So he's Big free throws now by Jaden McDaniels. Double bonus, two free throws the rest of the way for the Huskies. He knocks these two down, cuts it to a one possession game, and now all of a sudden Baylor, that has played with a cushion throughout the game. There's some real game pressure on the Bears. Let me remind you, Jonathan Isaac played at, uh, at Florida State. A little more offensive skill. I think so. Yeah. Jonathan Isaac's got a lot of offensive yes. skill. I mean, he does. He's a great player. Lottery pick. Yeah. But we've seen him go like behind the back dribble and then rise up for a jumper. Nice stroke. Well, he's got it all. He has got it all. And he's got him back within three. Pass fakes and shot fakes for Baylor would go a long way here because Washington is going to try to be really aggressive. Good pass. Butler's going to get a three. Great rebound by Gillespie, but he has it knocked away, and it'll be out of bounds to Washington. Well, I thought that was another great rebound by Gillespie. I thought he got fouled. He had that ball above his head, and I thought his arm got hit. I looked at Isaiah Stewart here, let him touch it. McDaniels cross court, wide open look. Wow. And a game time three for Carter. Another great pass by Washington, this time by McDaniels out of the post, looking opposite. Boy, how good has Naz Carter been in this game? The only time the Huskies led this game was at 5-3. to three. Around and out. Ball's still loose, and it's still Baylor's. Now, the shot clock is showing 10. It's got to be a reset. The shot hit the rim before it went out of bounds. What a great pass by Jaden McDaniels. And Naz Carter was ready to shoot when he caught it. It takes him a while to load it up. But when he's got his feet set, now the referees are going to look and see whether they got the right call on the out of bounds under. Whether it's going to remain Baylor ball. Last two minutes of regulation or any overtime period is when you can do that. They also be looking at the, the shot clock can't be at 10, right? Shot hit the rim, loose ball yeah, hit out the of bounds. So. 
A very pro Husky crowd here in Alaska as you can hear. I think it's the right call. I think it's Baylor's ball. And it should be with 20 on the clock, right? On the shot clock. You would think so. Well, it might even be less than that because of the, uh, well, there's no possession. Yeah, you're yeah. right. It should be 20. So Baylor ball, 20 on the shot clock with a minute eight to go. Washington has shown a great deal of poise for being a young team in this second half. Did not fold up. They stayed together. And the defense so much better after the first 10 minutes of the first half. Very few second chance opportunities for Baylor. A safe play into the backcourt and here comes Bandu. Got to get some movement here. T. Yeah, that's not a good shot at all. And this time it belongs to Washington. Good hustle there by Carter. Now Washington can take their time here and still get a two for one. We'll monitor review again to find out if the out of bounds call was correct. At one point, Baylor led by as many as 13, 59 46. It's now 64 all, so it's an 18 to 5 run for the Huskies. Look at the energy and the, and the young Washington players fighting their way back into this game. They've just had a great vibe about them in this second half. They calmed down. They were moving so fast in the first half. A lot of their turnovers came from just going too fast, not having anything there. And now the question is, th this really worked in, in Washington's favor, not only to keep the ball, but they got they essentially got a free timeout to be able to discuss how they want to handle this. So they're going to come down, run something, uh, get a quick shot, a quick good shot. Would you advocate a two for one here? I or always just, do. You always do. I always do. You see it. Two shots are better than one. Yeah, it goes without saying. You see it at the NBA level. You don't see it as often as you would think at the college level. You're seeing it more often, though. Daniels trying to post, being fronted right now by T. Baylor switching just about everything. Been a while since Stewart's had a good touchdown low. There it is. Almost automatic, it seems. And it was going against Mark Vidal, who is really strong. It's just that he's 6'5". Taking advantage of the switch. Washington with the lead. It almost looked like from the beginning of the play, the point was to get Stewart good position down low. And he paid off. Well, he stepped out to set a ball screen, got the switch, Vital switched out onto him. So that's a smaller man, even though he's a strong man. But Isaiah Stewart is not only bigger, I think he actually may be stronger than Vital, and that's saying something. Just a, a really well-executed play and a terrific job by Hamir Wright to deliver that pass. But now it's about not giving up an open three or an offensive rebound. Baylor will bring out T, Butler, Mitchell, Vital, and Gillespie. And Baylor does not have to settle for a three here. You know, they're, they're certainly not going to take it all the way down. You're going to see them try to get something relatively quickly. And Mike Hopkins says all the length that he's got out there defensively right now in that zone. They're going man to man. Yep. Going man to man. Yeah, you're right. Switching. First time tonight, right? No, they played it in the first half for, for several minutes. A miss, a rebound, a foul, and the Huskies headed back to the line. Boy, good call by Mike Hopkins to go to man-to-man. -man. You, you have to think that Baylor was preparing for something against the zone. And they've got a, a lineup out there, really, that can switch one through five, at least one through four. And Baylor did not attack that very effectively. 
And again, as we said, Mike Hopkins refers to the man-to-man -man as like an off-speed pitch, just trying to mess up the timing of the pitcher or in a basketball sense of the other team. They came out looking for one thing and they got another. Well, I, this could be a really good man-to-man -man team. I mean, they, they've got every, they've got the ability to play this if they want to. Now, you have to have a three. Baylor's got one timeout. Doesn't look like they're going to use it. Good switch by Wright. Teagle force it, miss it, and Washington will win it. What a comeback at the end of the game. The Huskies come back from 13 down, outscore Baylor 21 to 5 to close the game and win it by three. What a win for Washington. Tremendous amount of poise in the second half. And Washington, which looked very young at times, looked like the veteran team down the stretch, made plays defensively. Nas Carter was fantastic. And then the two freshmen, Jaden McDaniels and Isaiah Stewart, lived up to their billing. What a win for Mike Hopkins in Washington. A terrific performance in the second half by the Huskies. As they come back to beat the Bears, the Bears suffer their first defeat of the season. This is the season opener for Washington. And one more look at the basket that essentially was the game winner for the Huskies. Great job by Quade Green and Isaiah Stewart getting a little ball screen action. And then Hamir Wright came up to the top to deliver that pass. And Stewart was just a load inside. But what a great call by Mike Hopkins to go man for the last possession. That really seemed to confuse Baylor and was a big deal. Let's go to Seth Greenberg. Well, we're going to try to find Mike Hopkins somewhere in here. Colonel Shank just gave the Washington Huskies their trophy for their victory. And you guys were just talking about it. Hop, let me ask you something here, buddy. Father, Son, the Holy Spirit. <laughs> what were you most proud of your team about? Just how they fought. I mean, it was ugly. We were turning the ball over. Nothing went right. And they just kept fighting. And that's all you could do. We started becoming better defensively, understanding where we needed to defend. And I'm just really proud of those kids. How about your poise on the last offensive possession, getting to the second side and punching it inside? Unbelievable. These guys showed poise. And you, it's, we have a lack of experience. So that, that first half really taught us a lot. We, we were more poised in the second half, got to where we needed to, and just so proud of these guys right now. Last possession went man to man. Hey. Got a little tricks in the back. Uh, was that was that a curveball? It, mean... it was. Well, you know, we have a two. We have seven players that can be great man-to-man -man players, great size. We can suffocate people. We did it in the last. It was huge for us. How about your brand, Isaiah Stewart? He's listen. The guy's just a warrior. Jade McDaniel's a warrior. Not score. These guys just kept fighting, coach. And you know, like it's down and out. Down eleven. You just keep fighting. This kid stepped up huge, straight from the rock. Nas, that, cor that corner three. All right, we got to go. Hey, congratulations. Thank Great you. win. Thank you. Great resilience. Back to you, Dan. All right, Seth, thank you. Big win. Mike Hopkins and the Huskies and the crowd all fired up here in Anchorage as they win the Armed Forces Classic 67-64 over Baylor. Don't forget, Coast Guard Alaska Anchorage on ESPNU about 20 minutes from now. But right now, let's send it back to the studio because it's time for Sports Center.